Hey family, my name is Richard. And I'm Brittany. And we want to say thank you so much for tuning in right here at Love Always Ministries. Also, if this is your first time here, make sure that you subscribe to this channel and also press the bell notification so you can stay updated with all the videos we post right here at Love Always Ministries. And we also want to say thank you so much for your generosity. We can't do what we do without you. Um, because of our generous donors, we were able to get the lights, the camera, the microphones to make these productions happen and to make them possible for you. Um, because of the topics we talk about, YouTube does not monetize our channel. They give us less than $200 a year in ads. And so we are so grateful for your support. We are also helping um, people get set free from pornography and lust and to walk in pure all over the world and so if you want to be a part of what lovealwaysministries.com is doing you can do so by heading over to lovealwaysministries.com slash donate um, or you can give by mail just look for the address at the bottom of every page on our website also if you're on social media make sure you follow us at Richard Delamora at Brittany Delamore or on our Instagram at Love Always Ministries. We're always posting encouraging videos, encouraging posts because we want to encourage you throughout your day. So make sure you give us a follow. Uh, and if you haven't checked out our books, what are you waiting for? Hey. Uh, they are changing lives all over the world. We have A Call to Purity, which is really a great heart book about getting your heart right with the yeah. Lord. And we have a 40-day devotional called Stop Searching and Start Living. It's 40 days of tools to help you overcome lust, porn, and to walk in purity. So if you're struggling or know somebody who is, please pick up a copy for yourself. Pick up a copy for some friends so that you can be a blessing. And also, we want to be a blessing blessing to you and so we are starting something so exciting our connect hey, groups yeah. okay because we believe that you need to get connected and you need to stay accountable this is at no cost to you um, so if you want to join us for monthly teachings plus a group text thread where you can ask for prayers or submit your uh, submit your prayer requests praise reports if you're struggling you need a little encouragement you can head over to the group thread to go ahead and submit all that um, and so to sign up just visit lovealwaysministries.com and click on, click on our connect groups and make sure that you get registered for that. And also, thank you so much for your love, your support, your prayers, your generosity. Uh, we can't do what we do without you. We love you guys so much. And thank you for tuning in to a Love Always Ministries production right here on YouTube. We love you guys and enjoy the video. Hello, and thank you so much for tuning in to the Let's Talk Purity podcast with Richard and Brittany Delamora. This podcast is brought to you by edify.app. Thanks go. so much for tuning in. We're so excited that you guys are here. Today, we are going to be talking about a hot topic, mm. uh, looking past your partner's sexual past. Mm. Uh, we call this a hot topic because we get countless emails and direct messages. And one question that people are always asking us or often asking us is, hey, my partner has slept with a lot of people mm. and I have a hard time looking past it. Or mm. maybe some of their exes are still in our lives. Like when we still have to see them, it makes me feel very insecure because yeah. I know that he or she has slept with that person. Um, and this is something that honestly, I didn't realize was such a big issue mm -hmm. until I started seeing the amount of people that reach out about this. Um, because for me, like my, you know, if you don't know my story, like I was in the porn industry for seven years. So this is something that my amazing, wonderful, loving, graceful, confident, strong husband has had to overlook yeah. was the amount of people that I've been with um, and the amount of footage that's still, unfortunately, yeah, on the internet. So it's lot. like you have had to overlook a lot yep. with me, love. And like this is people, this is a burning question on people's heart. Like, how do I do it? Yeah. What's, what's your secret sauce? Yeah. Secret sauce. It's all Jesus, to it's be honest Jesus. with you. It's all the grace of God. Mm -hmm. But, um, one of the ways that I overlooked your past is to understand that you are a new creation in Christ. I think it isn't fair at times if we judge a person's past and, we think that they're the same person who they were a few years ago. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and for you, I wasn't with you. You made broken decisions. And your broken decisions um, 
did create somewhat of a an interesting past because of you know all the videos you went into but that that was your past like that's not who you are now and for me to judge you or for me to even like i don't know like get mad at you for what you've done in the past that's that's like irrelevant Mm -hmm. in in my book because that's not who you are today like you are a new creation i never forget the the day that i met you i didn't even know you were in the adult film industry it's so funny like a lot of these bloggers or people who write comments they always say wow look at this this pastor went after a porn star yeah uh, I didn't even know you were in the adult film industry. <laughs> like I, I just love people and I love Jesus. And you were happen, you know, I would happen to see you in church, right? But even just um going about it with your past, yeah, that's not a, uh, it wasn't a hard, it wasn't an easy conversation to have. But I had to learn first off to remind myself that you're a new creation in Christ. But the second thing I had to do is I had to accept it. Yeah. Um. And whenever you accept something, you die to it. Mm-hmm. So I had to die with the fact that you were an ex porn star. I had to die with knowing that you have hundreds of movies out there that people can go watch and see. I had to die to myself in that area of my life. Mm-hmm. And whenever you die in that area, it doesn't affect you. Because you can't affect a dead person. Mm -hmm. So when you accept that your partner has a past, your partner has made a mistake, you end up dying to yourself. Mm -hmm. And when you die to yourself, you can live again. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think for a lot of people, like they struggle with accepting it. I struggle with accepting that my wife did this. I struggle with accepting that my uh my uh man has a high bat body count right mm-hmm. or maybe you got heard that news from a person you're dating right you guys yeah. have been dating a while and you had that conversation it's like yeah. slept with 50 people it's like whoa 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 yeah. but i think the first thing that we need to do is we need to learn to accept it and as you learn to accept it it helps you to move mm-hmm. forward and move on yeah. and the moment that you don't accept it is the moment that those insecurities are going to be present in and through your life and you're not going to be able to walk in freedom. Yeah, and I think too, um, you you have to see the fruit of the person's yeah, life, yes, right? Yes, so, absolutely. Yeah, maybe that is their past, but what does their life look like now, yeah. right? Because for me, yes, porn was my past. Sleeping around, um, hookup culture, that was my past. Yeah. But Jesus had genuinely he made me a new creation where you know what i couldn't even operate that way anymore not even if i tried like i tried yeah you know like i can't even wear a bikini nowadays why because i don't want people looking at me like that because jesus christ has set me free i'm a new creation you know like i look at myself differently i value myself differently because of my relationship with the lord absolutely and so i think that when you see the fruit of somebody's life it can make it easier because like for you you saw like man like you don't you're there's no remnant of your past on you right but if you're starting to date somebody who says yeah i got a long sexual history but like they're still you know they're out there cursing they're posting provocative photos all those things yeah i'm not here judging but that's where they are in their journey yeah then maybe that per maybe it's making you insecure because you know that person could have uh the temptation to go backwards because they haven't fully allowed Christ to transform their life, yeah. right? Yeah. And so I think too, just looking at the fruit of somebody's life, yeah. um, and maybe if you're just dating somebody and that is their case where they're still, you know, with the, provo- they're still on their healing journey. Yeah, abso- you know? absolutely. Then that could make it harder, don't you think? Yeah, no, I think it could definitely make it harder. Uh, but you're right to, to understand that they're a new creation. Like look at their track record. Like mm-hmm. look at how they're operating. That that definitely uh, definitely helps. I think another thing that that helps you along you know your journey, especially if you're dealing with a partner with a with the past, is is just learning to cast down those negative thoughts. Yeah. I think like for me when you and I. <laughs> When you and I started dating, so many negative thoughts, you know, mm-hmm. that the thoughts of like, all right, um, you know, the enemy throws videos my way, your photos people my way. People would send them, people, yeah. We, yeah, they would literally send me your stuff. I would yeah. get, you know, people would write me and say, you're going to be married to this whore. And I'd get all these, like, some of the most negative things in the world. And at those moments, I could allow my mind to sit on that thought 
or I could allow my mind to rebuke the thought. Mm -hmm. I think what the enemy does is that he'll give you suggestions Mm -hmm. and he'll submit thoughts your way. And if you're not careful, you will hold on to those things. Yeah. And holding on to those things will mm-hmm. create mental movies in your life. Yeah. That will literally get the best of you. Yeah. And you'll start to place imagery and start to things in your mind, right? Seeing your partner with another person, it'll start to mess with you. Yeah. That's why it is so important that we learn to cast those thoughts down. Yeah. But if you don't accept it, right? If you don't go back and accept it, it's going to be hard for you to cast these thoughts down. That's what I'm saying. It comes in a sequence. So like I had to learn to understand your new creation. I accepted it casting thoughts down, right? Mm-hmm. Because when the enemy tries to throw those things at me, no, my wife is not a product of her past. She's a product of grace. Uh, yeah, she might have done those movies in her past, but she is in her past. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, but, but look at this or look at that. It doesn't matter right? Because she's a new creation. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what the enemy's going to try to do. The enemy's going to try to throw, you know, those paths in you to create those insecurities. And why is he going to do that? The main goal is to not allow you and your relationship and your marriage to flourish or that person you're dating to flourish and to come together. The enemy will do whatever it takes, babe, to bring disunity. Yeah, whether it's with somebody that has a sexual history or doesn't have a sexual history. The enemy's main goal is to disunify, to destroy, to disunify, just to break apart every piece of your life. Yeah. You know, so you're going to... If you're married to somebody with a sexual history, he's going to attack you in that way. If you were married to somebody that doesn't have a sexual history, he's going to attack you in other ways. Yeah, it, like it's like regardless, so you have to you have to learn to accept wherever you are in life. Yeah. Just like you're saying, accept it so that you can move forward. Yeah, absolutely. Mentally, and then casting those thoughts yeah. down is such a powerful tool. And if you are are battling with all of this and thoughts of your pers- of your partner's sexual past and you're not spending time in the yeah. word of God. That's another thing. Come on. You got to be you in his presence. You need the word of God to renew your mind. It's Every only day. his truth that sets you free. You need to be basking in his presence mm-hmm. because he'll start to give you confidence because why are you starting why are you thinking so much about their sexual history? Because in you, there's a fear yeah. and an insecurity. Absolutely. What if they do that to me? Yeah. What ifs? What if she cheats on me the way she cheated on her ex? Yeah. What if he divorces me the way he divorced his last yes. wife? Yes. Like, and you start to think of all these things. Yep. But when you are are uh, planted and rooted in yep. the word of God, you're planted and rooted in his spirit, mm. you start to discern the thoughts of God versus the thoughts of the enemy. Yep. And you start to go, okay, that is clearly not a thought that God wants me to be focusing on or yep. meditating on. So you can start to rebuke those yep. thoughts and then start to focus on things that are noble, mm. praiseworthy, and true and start to redirect your mind um, on Christ. Yeah, yep. that's actually, that's really good that you said that just really being in the word of God that's that's how I was able to overcome this like it doesn't even affect me at all not like one bit about your past he never uh, brings it up he's never once thrown it in my face never. like he is legit he practices what he's preaching yeah, here yeah. like he's been the most gracious man well, like and i think too babe when you're not secure in yourself the mm-hmm. enemy will feed you feed on your insecurities Absolutely. Yeah. okay i know who i am in christ i have people ask me well she's done all these videos um you know you know when it comes to male sizes and comparison stuff like does that <laughs> Doesn't that oh mess with you? Doesn't that get the best of you? Yeah. No, because I know who I am mm-hmm. in Christ. God has called you to be my wife. Mm-hmm. So if God has called you to be my wife, I know mm-hmm. that God has given me every ability in my heart and my soul to love you properly. I love what you just said. You said that God has given you to be my wife. Yeah. See, when you know that God has called that person to you, then you quit putting your life in the hands of that person. You recognize that your life is actually and your relationship are in the hands of God. Yes. So then if you have a good relationship with God and you trust God, then you trust that the future of your marriage is going to be good because God brought it together. Mm -hmm. But the enemy wants to bring that fear and insecurity so that he can disunify the very thing that God 
-hmm. is brought together. Absolutely, absolutely. That's actually a really good word. That's why going back to it, it's really understanding and knowing who you are. Mm -hmm. And I believe that whoever God sends your way, he is going to give you the ability and the grace and the anointing to be able to handle it. Maybe you're here today and you're watching and you're saying, I can't do that. Well, maybe you can't do that. Maybe, you know, someone like, you know, who was... Well, I mean, I don't think it's going to happen to everybody who, well, you know, whoever has a, a, a say, a sexual history, right? as in to say, you know, maybe you encounter an ex porn star, but I'm like, hey, you know. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so sorry about that, you guys. My alarm came off. <laughs> alarm came off. Um, but um, yeah, I think um, just going back to what I was uh, trying to say, what was I trying to say? You were trying to say that if somebody has a partner with a sexual history or if they've encountered an ex-porn star. Or oh, yeah. Whatever, God, yeah. God's going to give you that that grace and that anointing mm-hmm. to, to be with them. Yeah. You know, and, and I really and I really believe that also too, um, in our in our um, in our marriage and in our in our dating life. I had to realize and recognize that uh, we all fall short of the glory of God. Mm-hmm. And I think it's so funny. Like, if you're a person who doesn't offer grace, you're probably a person who's self righteous. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, when you're a person of grace, you yeah. understand that I'm gonna make a mistake. Hey, I fell short. Yeah. You know, maybe I didn't do uh, porn movies, but maybe I fell short in other areas in maybe my I life. Maybe I have a long sexual history, yeah. but I'm angry or I've watched a lot yeah. of porn yeah. or, you know, it's Absolutely. like we all have sin in our lives, especially before we knew Jesus. We all have habitual sin yeah. in our lives, yeah. right? Yeah. He who is perfect, go ahead and cast the first stone, yeah. right? Absolutely. Nobody can cast the first stone. Why? Because none of us are perfect. Yeah. And I think that's something like you should remember, like if you're dealing with your partner's sexual past, it's like, dude, no, none of us are perfect. Perfect. Mm-hmm. We all fall short of the glory of God, and I understand that I'm not perfect, mm-hmm. and I need grace and I need help. So that really helps us to live within margin, like the right margins, right, yeah. to be able to operate and to be able to flow in this. And I know for you guys are probably listening, like, man, this is like easier said than done, right? It is, yeah, like right? you're making it easier <laughs> said than done. But the reality is, it's going to take time. Yeah, it's going to take time in you basking in the Word of God. It's going to take time in knowing who you are, mm-hmm. and it's going to take time in you being confident and not yeah. allowing insecurities or the spirit of fear to try to get the best of you. Yeah, but it's going to take some time. This is why I am encouraging you. We are encouraging that it is a process. Yeah. And I think if there's somebody you're going to process with, process with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is going to be able to help you and lead you and guide you in this instance, right? Um, And this is another thing that I was kind of thinking about. Like, I was thinking about this the other week. You know how oftentimes, like, let's talk to single people real quick. You know how oftentimes we're like, God, could you please bring me a helpmate? I think that's one of the most challenging things that you could ever pray about. Why? What if God brings you a gomer? Yeah, there you go. For those who don't know, Gomer was a prostitute and Hosea was a prophet, a man of God. And he said, go after Gomer, a prostitute. And then he married her and then she leaves him to go prostitute. Again. She cheats on him. She had everything she needed. Yeah. Right? But like she left him and cheated on him and... God said, still go after her. Mm -hmm. You know, God was showing us through that, like that even when we leave God or we cheat on God or, you know, that his love is so great, right? But it's like, yeah, what if God calls you yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like one of the one ahead. of the most struggling, one of the most hardest prayers that we can pray is as ask God for a suitable helpmate. Because mm-hmm. when it came to you and I, like, in my mind, I'm not gonna probably pick like oh, I'm gonna find somebody who is an ex porn star who has done a <laughs> hundred of movies. No, yeah. like nobody in my past relationships, I don't even think I had an extensive mm-hmm. sexual past. But you know, one thing I know about God, like God knows what's best for me, mm-hmm. what I need. Yeah. And you were the, the, the suitable helpmate mm-hmm. that he gave to me. Yeah. Right. And because of that, you know, God has given me the grace and the anointing to be able to handle yes. your past. And And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because, you know, sometimes we pray these prayers, but it's like, you know, what if this person has a high body count? Like, are you going to allow their past 
to be able to rule like something good that God has in front of you. And that's yeah. why like for me, I wasn't going to allow your past to affect what you and I could be. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to give the enemy my future because yeah. I am so caught up in your past. Yeah. And that's like the trick of the enemy, guys. And we got to be careful for that because mm -hmm. it's like, that's all he offers is past, past, past because he wants us to stay in our past. Yeah, exactly. But how many, you know, what relationships are being, are not, you know, coming together because we're so fixated on, on our past. Mm -hmm. If we really believe that God knows what's best for us and who's best for us, then why don't we believe that like that God ordained person that he sends, like, why don't we capitalize on that and really believe and like partner up with them? I think because of the, the fear and... Uh-huh. So here, here's the big thing that I keep hearing from you is that God brought me to you. Yes. See, if God brings somebody to you, he's going to give you the grace for that person. Yes, absolutely. Let me tell you something. If you are dating somebody right now and you can't get over their sexual history, here's the first thing I want to do. I want to encourage you to go on a fast. Yes. And I want you to pray. Yes. And I want you to say, God... Is this the person that you have for me? Yes. Because I am having a really hard time overlooking their sexual past. Yeah. If God says no, please leave them. Yeah. Here's why. You're only going to harm yourself mm. and you're going to harm that person because mm. you guys are going to end up, if you end up getting married and then you're going to keep bringing up their yeah. sexual history because you can't yeah. overlook it. And it's okay if you can't overlook yep. it, right? If you can't, maybe you're just not graced for that person and yeah. they're not graced for you. And maybe God has someone else that's more suitable for you. Yeah. So, but if you're going to be the type of person that's going to continuously remind your partner of their past, yeah. then maybe they're not the one for you Absolutely. maybe you're not the one for them yeah. um, and be humble enough to admit that before getting into marriage so because otherwise you're gonna have so many disagreements and so many yeah. arguments and so many fights just about the person's past yeah. in marriage so you have to humbly accept hey I just don't have the strength in me to forget yeah. this person's past or to overcome their past or to overlook it. Like, I just can't do it. Yeah, that's so um, good. And so you're going to have to admit that in the dating process. Yeah. Please don't marry the person if you can't overlook it. But go on a fast yeah. and pray about it because maybe you just need to be more connected to the Lord or yeah. maybe you just need that word from God. Yes, this is the person yeah. for you. But let the Spirit of the Lord guide you yeah. and not your own emotions, not your own flesh, not your longing or desire desire to so be in good. a relationship let the spirit of god yeah guide you. that's actually really good because that's like literally what i did and that's how i'm able to be that's mm -hmm. how I'm, i was able to you know to flow in our relationship mm -hmm. in our marriage and i um you know i never want to be the type of person to throw your past against you um mm -hmm. uh, and if that's the case like how can i love you properly if like mm -hmm. i'm allowing you know your past you know um to get the best of mm -hmm. to get the best of me you, okay. you can't do that yeah. like like I'm either going to walk in, you know, my future with you or I'm going to stay in the past with you. Yeah. And I don't know, in our relationship, like I want to I want to keep moving forward. I want to be able to help people. I want to be able to not be able to stay stuck, but I want our marriage to blossom. But yeah. I mean, it's hard for somebody to move forward when you keep reminding them of their past. Mm -hmm. And I think oftentimes the reason why relationships stay stuck is because you are stuck because that past, that place is hindering you and is getting the best of you. And if it is, if you are married and if it is getting the best of you, literally, like you said, go on a pass, pa go on a, go on a fast. fast and pray, yep. pray through it. You need to be, yep. yeah. If you're married to this person, that's pray. even more ammo for yep. you to go on a fast because pray. you have agreed uh, at the altar till death do us yep. part. You made a vow to be with yep. this person and like, it's no good for your marriage to keep reiterating their past. Like it's not going to, it's yep. not going to make the past go away. Yeah, exactly. It's not going to change the past. Yep. So you might as well accept it, go on a fast, learn to accept it and move forward. Yep. Um, and if it's something mm -hmm. that maybe you need counseling for, because it's such a trigger for you, go mm -hmm. get the help that you need. Go seek yeah. out a Christian therapist that you can process all this with, but don't try to keep processing it with with your partner because they may not be the right person to process their own past yeah. with because you're gonna in the process of your hurt counselor. yeah that's what i just said yeah, yeah i get a therapist because in the process of your hurt you're going to end up hurting your spouse and hurting your marriage yeah, so, so yeah good. go go on a fast come on guys yeah. we could do this I'm, all right uh are we wrapping this up yeah no definitely okay. wrapping us up just want to leave you with one thought okay. 
The Bible says that love holds no record of wrongs. Mm-hmm. Love hold no love holds no record of wrongs, guys. In our relationships, let's not hold our past against each other, okay? Because Jesus wouldn't do that, right? When we repent, He doesn't even remember y'all. Uh, and I just really believe that if you learn to hold on to the right things, then the right things will start to grow in your life. Amen. That's all I want to say. All right, good go. word, good word, good word to wrap that up. All right, you guys, thanks so much for tuning in again to the Let's Talk Purity podcast. We do have a couple books on Amazon if you want to check yes, those out. Come on. Stop searching Stop and searching. start living. A 40 day devotional to help you overcome lust, for and to walk in purity, and a call to, call purity, to purity. A great book to get your heart yes, it right is. before the Lord. Also, a great book if you are struggling with your partner's past because it's just going to help you, like Jesus yes. is going to help you, um, and always getting into your Bible, of course. Please do that uh we will see you guys not next week but the week after thanks again for tuning in to the let's talk purity podcast have a blessed day let's be honest friends life is hard and it's a whole lot harder when you are doing life alone this is the reason why my wife and i created the meetup where we get connected and we stay accountable We're so excited for you guys to join us because throughout the years, my husband and I have heard from people that they are ashamed to open up about their struggles, whether it be to porn or addiction or finding freedom or just how to pursue a pure heart. And, And they're afraid to open up to their leaders, their pastors and so forth because they're battling with shame. And so that's why God birthed the meetup on our hearts because this is an online community where everybody's going through something. And this is a place where you can get Get connected and stay accountable. My husband is going to teach the men every month. I'm going to teach the women along with other leading experts in the fields of the topics of identity, porn, purity, and so forth. Um, And it's just going to be a really great place where you guys can come. You can learn, grow in the word of God. We're also going to have a text thread where you can hop on and text your fellow brothers or sisters in the Lord. You can ask for prayer requests. You can share praise reports. Um, And this is where the accountability happens. Happens. So we want to invite you to join the meetup by filling out the intake form below. We're so excited to connect with you. God bless you.